Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips and welcome to the video where I finally show you that I spent way too ridiculously long making this cookie. Honestly, could have gotten it done in 48 hours, but I decided to take almost a week to finish it. After creating the dough, which was basically my sugar cookie recipe, but I dyed it pink, I started researching how big a Barbie box was. Once I discovered that I couldn't actually find a definitive box measurement, I just decided to go with whatever measurement I wanted. Barbie boxes seem to come in lots of different shapes and sizes, so I figured whatever I would do would look good. My audience is constantly asking me, what projector do you use? And I never want to recommend it because look at this ridiculous setup. Yeah, I have a box and a fondant bucket to support everything. Now, this isn't really the projector's fault, but I do think that there are better systems and better ways to hold your projector in place. So I don't really recommend this one. I will say it is a fairly cost-effective one, so I will still link it down in the description box below. Working on a project like this, I really do struggle with measurements and making sure that everything's going to fit in. And because Barbie isn't just something that's generic, I have to make sure that it looks relatively close to a Barbie or else it will be unrecognizable. So I'm really trying to make sure that I direct the dough right underneath the projector. And I know projecting and baking always looks like the quote unquote easy way out, but there is a finesse and art to it as well. For example, I always choose pictures that don't have a lot of detail. I go for coloring pages because then I can see the outline really clearly. Once you start projecting on color, it's a lot more difficult to see fine details. You also want to make sure that you really flower your surface so it makes everything fairly movable. Also, I don't really recommend cutting on your sill pat because it can damage it, so I am being very, very careful. What I'm doing here is I'm making sure that the rough edges are smoothed out. Now, you won't need to do that if you actually have an X-Acto knife that is sharp enough, but uh, classic me, I did not switch over my blade, so it does create a jagged edge, so I was just fixing it with my fingers. I'm leaving the projection up there so I know exactly how wide I need to make the box and how tall I need to make it as well. Nothing is worse than making a super detailed component and then discovering it doesn't actually fit into the entire project. I've had that happen before, so I'm being very careful here. I'm using a bench scraper to cut that. I just find if I tried to use a ruler and then an X-Acto knife, it might not end up exactly the way I want it. I also needed to make two panels that were exactly the same size, so any imperfections that I might have done on the first one, I have to make sure that they're also on the second one, so I stack them together and then cut them. I did also really try to make sure that everything was equal thickness. One panel is going to stay completely as it is, and the other panel is going to be the opening of the box. So I want that Barbie logo to sit right in that left-hand corner. When conducting my very mild search of all things Barbie, I saw a lot of Barbie boxes had the logo in that bottom corner and some sort of design protruding out of it. So I decided to go with that. My original intent was to go with a 90s themed Barbie. Apparently that particular logo was used anywhere from the 70s to the late 90s. So that's what I decided to go with. Personally, it is my favorite Barbie logo. I think it's one that's most clear. And to me, I associate that with Barbie. That front piece is the most tricky because it's so thin. So I did make it just a slight bit thicker to make sure that it will be able to withstand any pressure that might be applied to it when it's placed on the top of the box. I then created the side panel of the box and the bottom panel. This is very reminiscent of the Lucky Charms cookie box that I made. If you guys missed that video, you can check it out in the right hand corner here. I know with projects like these, there's always going to be room for imperfection. So I try to cover it up with other details that I know fit with the theme. In this instance, flowers and simple flowers were definitely the way to go. My cookie recipe is fairly no spread, but I really wanted to make sure that things were going to bake properly. So I left it in the fridge overnight on the pans. And yes, I do bake all my cookies on sill pats, but you can do it on parchment as well. I'm setting the oven here to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And normally I place my cookies in the oven for about 11 minutes or so, but this time I went with 15 minutes because they were bigger pieces. 
Cookies don't take that long to cool, so I always use this opportunity to start making the royal icing as they're cooling. The majority of this cookie, I'm using pipe and flood consistency. When it's such a large piece of cookie, it is generally going to be pipe and flood consistency unless you're doing something really, really specific. But I do want that smooth look, so that's what I'm going with. I poked holes in the cookie because I was seeing different things on Instagram pop up where apparently that prevents craters, but it wasn't really necessary for this part of the design. I just wanted to see if it would work. Truthfully, it didn't really work that well with the white side, and I didn't end up doing it on this pink side, and honestly, it turned out pretty smooth anyway. You might be wondering why I bothered to dye that dough pink when I'm just covering it up with royal icing. It's because there are some parts that do end up exposed and having it pink just makes it look less bare and makes it look more put together. This was just a passion project for me, which by the way is such a fulfilling thing. If you are a busy baker, I know you probably don't have time for projects like these, but if you do get the time, it is so, so fulfilling, but it can also kind of just take over. If I wasn't on summer vacation, I think I could have got this done realistically in 72 hours. The first day would have been spent making the dough, then actually baking all of the pieces. The next day I would have decorated everything with royal icing, and then the next day I would have put it all together. This is where I discovered that I couldn't actually project onto that. I couldn't see it clearly enough, so I decided to pivot and move on to the Barbie logo first. Then I would go back to my Barbie problems later. This is just so satisfying. I love doing lettering with a projector. I so often just freehand my lettering, but when I have the time, I love using a projector because it always turns out so perfect. And yes, you can use pipe and flood consistency when the lettering is that big. I don't recommend pipe and flood blood for when the lettering is a little bit smaller. My solution to fix my Barbie problem was to make this entire thing white. So that would be the background and then I would place all of those details on top. This definitely is not my first choice just because it ends up being a lot of icing then on one cookie, but since this was mainly for aesthetic purposes and not for anybody but my own self, I decided just go with it. And this is where things kind of go a little wrong. I decided to go thinner on my icing because I didn't want there to be too much icing. I didn't want things to be so puffy that it would be inedible. But in doing so, it made that leg portion really, really loose. And then I had to end up adding things on to kind of create a shadow. But really, it was to cover up the mistake that I made on that leg because it was over flooding everywhere just because of how thin it was. After I got through that whole leg debacle portion, then I was able to move on to her hair. And at first I just thought solid yellow, solid yellow blonde, just super cartoony. I actually end up adding a little bit of dimension to that. So once I placed down all of my pipe and flood consistency, I thickened up my royal icing by adding more icing sugar and a little bit more meringue powder so I could create details like this. If I had just tried to do pipe and flood, it's all just gonna flood together. And although the cookie is big enough and I probably would have been able to get those details on there. It just wouldn't look as defined. Now I started making a face, but I quickly decided I actually don't like it with a face. And had I gone the distance with the face, maybe I would have liked it. But as I was outlining things, I was like, you know, I really don't like it that much. I think she would look a lot more sleek with either just a mouth or just eyes. Just eyes seemed a little bit weird to me, so I actually did end up going with just sunglasses, which I don't know why I didn't think of that before, but that will happen a little bit later on in the video. Right now I'm adding definition to her hair, and you might be thinking, why are you using white? And simply put, it's about saving material and time, so I don't wanna mix up a whole new piping bag with the piping consistency and yellow because I'm really not gonna use that on any other part of the project. So this way I can just paint on that yellow with my edible paints. I also want to note that I didn't really have to wait for that to dry. This piping consistency is fairly thick and it dries fairly quickly, especially on that surface level. If you indent it with your finger, it probably will crumble at that point if you try to do it right away, but you can easily do something like gently paint with edible paint right on top. I wasn't happy with the cratering that happened, and honestly, it only happened because of the way that I was applying it. I used a spatula instead of a piping bag, which would have saved me the trouble, but I decided these designs look actually really cool, a little bit retro, and go with the whole beach theme. 
To make sunglasses, all I did was take some edible pen, put it on there, and then use my piping consistency to create the sunglasses. Here's where things get tricky once everything dried overnight because I really wanted to make sure it was super, super dry through all the layers before I did this. I melted some sugar so that it becomes this caramel and the caramel hardens very, very quickly, which is what we want to actually put the box together. I use the same trick when creating things like my gingerbread houses and creations. You have to work incredibly quickly. And one thing that's different about sugar cookies than the construction gingerbread that I usually use is obviously it's a little bit more delicate, so it's a little harder for me to work with and it's harder for me to go as fast as I need to. So that was one thing that I struggled with. Now, of course, I knew that it looked kind of ugly to have these brown splotches everywhere, but this is why I made the flour cookies because I knew that I would need them to cover up some of that ugliness. I was super grateful though that everything did come together. Sometimes you can measure things out as best as you want to and it still won't actually be matching because something baked up wrong or you just cut something a little bit weirdly. So I'm very, very happy that it did fit together. Now the one thing is the caramel did cause a little bit of a bigger edge lump than I wanted to, so it didn't fit together as nicely as it could have. But I decided to just pivot as I usually do with big projects like this, and I added on a border. And of course that did mean I had to add a lot more meringue powder and icing sugar to the existing royal icing that I already made so that it could be piped into a fairly defined border. Now I know I usually talk about pricing, but I honestly don't know what I would charge for this cookie. So much work, so much construction to it. I would venture somewhere though in the ballpark of $400. But honestly, would someone pay that for such a detailed cookie? I'm not so sure. I think the sell would be a lot easier if this were all done in cake. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!